All right, guys, in today's video, we're going to be talking about which is faster, the 2022 WRX, the VB WRX, so anything 2022 plus, or the VA WRX STI, the STI, which is the 15 to 21 STI. And in today's video, we're going to go over exactly which is the faster car by not doing a street race. We're going to do math here. And you guys enjoyed the last video that I did where I compared the VA and the VB WRX so much. And obviously this was the top comment to compare the WRX to the STI. So I've done the math. I've looked at the data. We're going to look at the difference between the tuned values between the FA24 motor in the VB WRX and the EJ in the STI. And by the end of the video, you guys will know exactly which is the faster car. We are talking in absolutes, which means we're quite literally mathematically going to prove which is the faster car. At which stage are they faster? How much does it cost to get there? So you guys can have a really good understanding by the end of the video of if you wanna just be the faster car, should you buy an STI or a VB WRX? This is my 2022 WRX. For the purpose of this video, if you guys aren't following the channel, this WRX is making more than 60 wheel horsepower more than the top value that we're gonna talk about in today's video, which if you are subscribed to the channel, might be a little bit of a shock that I'm running pretty large amounts of power on this car right now. Obviously you guys don't know that yet, but you will if you've subscribed the channel so there's a reason to hit the subscribe button and if you're skeptical of the video at least stick it out so you at the very least can understand why i'm so definitively correct because it is just correct on which car is faster and we're going to get into the math so you guys can understand it we're going to kind of we're going to skip over some of the exact math and i'm going to give you the values because obviously there's a lot of calculation here but i've done all the math that's why i've got my paperwork here and we're going to dive right in so to set the assumptions for the video so what we're going to look at as our kind of like basis for tuning is we're gonna look at the stage one and stage two values, basically the wheel horsepower and torque that each of these cars get in stage one and stage two configurations. And we're gonna be looking at data from Cobb. Now I know that you guys are going to say, well, a Cobb tune or an off the shelf tune isn't the best way of understanding these cars potential because you can go push them further and further. But the reason I do this is because the majority of you guys aren't gonna be spending $10,000, $15,000 building your cars, and I would agree, if you're gonna spend 10 or $15,000, you can make these cars very uniquely designed to whatever you choose to use them for, right? The EJ can make a lot of power. If you put an STI transmission in this car, you can make more power for cheaper. You know, there's all these advantages and disadvantages between the two cars. What holds standards is how fast are they stock, how fast are they in stage one, and how fast are they in stage two, and those are all tunes that you can pretty much reach stage two for less than three grand, pretty much. And we're gonna talk about that later in the video. So this is the best way just to understand, you know, from increment to increment, cause that's the only time they're comparable, right? Cobb also has the most amount of data with their off the shelf tunes. There's quite literally no tuner or tuning organization that has more data on these Subarus than Cobb. And you know, you can fight me for that one, but it is the truth by a overwhelming amount of data. And that's why we're gonna use Cobb as our basis of numbers. Two other aspects that I wanna talk about. First, I think is the most interesting. A lot of you guys, because a lot of people in the STI community are very passionate about the STI is always better than the WRX for a multitude of reasons. One of the beautiful things about wheel horsepower and why we're gonna be discussing our numbers in wheel horsepower in this video is that is quite literally the translational power or the power that impacts the ground, the surface power that these cars output, regardless of any other aspect of the car. It's the power that is is interpreted by the ground that moves the vehicle forward, which means the wheel horsepower has already calculated things like mechanical losses, translational losses, energy loss, essentially. And what does that really mean? When you cr produce crank horsepower, the difference between crank horsepower or brake horsepower, those are two different stages of horsepower, you know, theoretic numbers, and wheel horsepower is your crank horsepower is the you know, horsepower that you make at the crank, and that's before you lose energy as it translates all the way to the wheels, right? You have to go through all these mechanical components that produce wheel horsepower, the actual power that your tires interact with the pavement with, and for every car it's different, but if you always speak in terms of wheel horsepower, you can then normalize across the board. We're gonna go one step for further and look at wheel horsepower relative to pounds of weight. So we can actually normalize these cars and compare them in similar terms and really understand the percent differences, which will tell you which is the faster car. Yes, the STI has a better transmission. If you're making more power, is it better for speed or use? Not really, it is marginally better, but you would have to be in a racing situation with a professional driver to actually see any very small percent of difference. Sure, the differential is better. Sure, the suspension's better, the braking are better. 
but those are only really gonna be experienced in a track or autocross type event. You're not gonna see that on a day to day. And that's another reason it just doesn't, you know, factor into this video because on a day to day driving, you know, we're talking about the actual output of these vehicles and which is gonna be faster and you'd be surprised where this is gonna go. So let's dive right into it. So we're gonna start by looking at the stage one. We're not gonna look at stock because those are very well published numbers. We know what the zero to 60 times are. We know what the quarter mile times are. Those are done by the manufacturer. Those are things that we can to an extent trust, but we're looking at tuned value here to see what these cars really can unlock because I'll go ahead and say it. The FA24 in this, uh, in this car is probably the most robust engine that Subaru's ever made, meaning you can make more power with this engine than any other engine that they've ever produced. And you know that's one of the reasons we have to look at tuned value because when you buy a stock VVWX, the engine is barely you know, being utilized. But let's get straight into it. So I'm gonna use my numbers because I've done a whole lot of math that you guys can't see, but we're gonna see it up on the screen so you can visualize it. So we're gonna start with the weights. 2022 WRX weighs 3,297 pounds, where the 15 to 21 STI, roughly, we're averaging it over the years, weighs 3,386 pounds. It's a heavier car at the get-go. Now, before we get into the numbers, I do want to just say out loud, with the FA24 data from Cobb, the horsepower outputs are very, very similar in meaning that they're almost the same year to year. The STI from 2015 to 2021 has had slightly varying differences of outputs from Cobb tuning because there have been slight changes in the internal components of the EJ that goes in that car. So what I've done is I've interpolated the data between the years and actually how many of those years are actually on the roads. So if you're considering buying one new and you're just like, I'm gonna get an STI, you're not sure what year you're gonna get. I've now interpolated and averaged the data out just in case you're gonna buy any of those years. So we can have a true on the true understanding of what the VA STI is actually outputting. So in stage one, and this is wheel horsepower, the 2022 WRX makes 293 wheel horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque, foot pounds of torque. I'm gonna say foot pounds in this video, but depending on where you are in the world, it could be pound feet versus foot pounds. Conversely, the STI in stage one makes 290 wheel horsepower and 305 foot pounds of torque. Stage two for the VBWX, it makes 327 wheel horsepower and 363 foot pounds of torque. And stage two for the VA STI, it makes 305 horsepower and 335 foot pounds of torque. You can already tell there is a pretty substantial difference in the power made with these stage setups, which have relatively minimal modifications, except for stage two on the STI, and we'll talk about this later, but I'm gonna say it now. Stage two for the VBWX is an intake, a charge pipe, and a top mount intercooler, right? For the STI, it's an intake, turbo inlet, injectors, fuel pump, fuel pressure regulator kit, fuel rails and fuel rail lines. So not only is it making significantly less power, but that to make the 305 and 335, you need to do significantly more work on the EJ. Just saying, I'm not, you know, I'm not taking a side here, but we're just looking at the data. We're gonna break this down further. We're now going to equalize these, equalize these two cars so we can compare them in relative terms. So we're gonna look at the wheel horsepower per pound the vehicle weighs, because they're not the same weight. So we need to compare them in ways that we can quite literally if they were side by side on a piece of pavement and you were to run through the gears in perfect succession, like both were to perfectly be raced, right? With zero error, we're gonna then be able to compare it in that terms. So when we break down the wheel horsepower to pound of weight of the vehicle, the VBWX in stage one makes 0 0.0888 wheel horsepower per pound and 0 0.0942 torque per pound. The STI makes 0 0.08564 wheel horsepower per pound and 0 0.09007 torque per pound. In stage two, the VBWX makes 0 0.09918 wheel horsepower per pound and 0 0.1101 torque per pound, where the STI makes 0 0.09007 wheel horsepower per pound and 0 0.09893 torque per pound. Now this is where it gets interesting because now we can make a percent difference in torque and power. And this is where we get a fundamental result in perfect driving conditions, right? This is in 
perfectly drived cars, right? Because there are no other factors or they're very, very negligible factors that make these cars different when they're outputting wheel horsepower to the weight of the car. In stage one, there is a 3.6% difference in power. The VBWX in stage one makes 3.6% more wheel horsepower. That is a pretty substantial number because you have to also realize wheel horsepower is also taking out all the like all the loss of energy, which means it's it's like a larger percent, right? It's a percent of a percent, which means it's it's a bigger value. But we can you, know, you guys get the math. It makes 4.3% more torque. The VB makes 4.3% more torque in stage one than the STI. This is where it gets substantial. In stage two, as we're pushing to make more power, remember also significant difference in the amount of parts and work that need to make that power. In stage two, the WRX, the VBWX makes 10.1% more power in wheel horsepower than the STI and 11.2% more torque than the STI. And before I make this like crazy statement that as a lot of you guys are probably gonna get pretty triggered on, not only does the WRX on average make more than 10% more power and 11% more torque with the FA20 motor than the STI, it makes that without having to do significant work. To do an intake, a charge pipe, and a top mount and air cooler, the average person owning this car can do that work. You're talking all air side components, and at the most, you're talking clamps and rubber. And rubber. Very easy to do and not that expensive. With the STI, to make, to even come close, you know, to come within a 10% difference, you have to just do the intake, which is the same, but the, the turbo inlet, which is also the same, it's really hard to get to, but so is the intake on this car. I mean, they're pretty much the same. But then you also have to do injectors, the fuel pump, pain in the butt to do, fuel pressure regulator kit, fuel rail, and fuel rail lines. Significantly harder for the average person to do and significantly more time and investment into the car. Yeah, if you own a shop, there's probably only a couple hour difference in that work itself, but you're already doing a lot more work. So for everyone that's gonna be like, well, with the STI, you can make a bunch more power. Well, for a lot of, for the same amount of money, you can make pretty significant power with the WRX. With the STI, you actually have to do some pretty substantial projects to make power, turbo kit, upgraded turbo, all these things where you don't actually have to do that much work on this car either to take the next step. And don't worry, we might have a video coming if you guys enjoyed this video and looking at, you know, what would happen if you maybe spent another couple grand and did a full pro tune, how those two cars compare without doing substantial work. We could do that because this car is making that power. But you guys will have to let me know in the comment section below if you want to see that video. Now jumping into cost. Let's say you're not sure what you want to buy or you own one or the other. Let's say you own a VB and you were thinking about an STI because it can make more power. It's a faster car or vice versa. You own an STI and you're thinking about a VB or you just don't own one yet. Let's talk about cost. So in terms of the cost of the actual car itself, which does play a factor, they're actually pretty equivalent. Most will say there are cheaper STIs out there if you get like a high mileage STI or something like that. But honestly, you're gonna have a lot more work to get to the point where you can start making these numbers reliably, like just maintenance work and regular work. So they're pretty equivalent. I would say maybe the WRX, if you buy a base model, is a hair cheaper. I like to usually say that the WRX is an equivalent cost if you also then wanna put an STI transmission in it. That's generally has been true for the last two years is that you can usually get a WRX put a full STI transmission and all the appurtenances in, and you're probably equal in value to an STI where you really lose is the brakes. You know, the brakes are one of the bigger differences with this car. You really need to spend some money to put some brakes on it, but that's only if you're really doing some tracking and stuff like that. But in terms of the cost of the car, it's about the same to make this power in terms of the cost of tuning. So stage one on the STI, access port is gonna cost you about 600 bucks. The access port on this car, which is the stage one, all you need is gonna be 650, so slight difference in cost. Stage two is where you see the big difference. Stage two on the VBWX, the average person will pay about two grand for what needs to be done. You can definitely get used parts and make that happen cheaper. That's definitely something that you can do. I'm just like normalizing what you could do for like, you know, to achieve that power. And then for the STI, you're looking at about $2,900, close to three grand. Um, it gets a little bit more complicated if you're paying a shop to do the work. The STI becomes a lot more expensive. The work to install the parts required become a lot more. So you're probably looking at about a grand, depending on where you are, at least in my market, maybe 600 to a grand to get the parts installed for a VBWX. You're probably looking at like 900 to 
1600 for the STI. So I would say on average, the STI to reach these powers, you're probably looking at one to $2,000 more. And that's also considering that the STI is gonna make more than 10% less power and more than 11% less torque in stage two. So I think we've all come to the same conclusions that when we normalize these cars into equal, equal playing fields, at least up to stage two, the VBWX is the faster car of the two. And I make this video not to get a lot of people triggered, but if you are triggered, let me know in the comments. But um, it's just a fact, right? And what makes these cars interesting is, yeah, the STI, if you're tracking it or you're racing it, has a lot of other, other components that make it more, you know, fun, more capable, faster, more, you know, just the better car on a track. And you can eventually get there with a WRX with some money, uh, but you're kind of paying for that to be part of the car. And theoretically, the EJ can hold more power, but we're kind of seeing that's not really the case anymore with some of the extraordinarily fast VBWXs that are coming out from some of these tuning shops that we've seen five, six, 700 wheel horsepower cars running ridiculous track times, you know, straight track times running insane, insane power. So I actually feel like at this point in my career as being somewhat of a Subaru expert, I can no longer say the EJ is the better car for making lots of power because I don't actually think that's true anymore. And until we have more of these VBWXs making 600 plus wheel horsepower, it will be hard to say, but um, that is the pretty much theoretical maximum that you're gonna get out of any Subaru without doing substantial work beyond the substantial work you're already doing for the engine because a lot of the components of this car are just not designed to handle that amount of power. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you wanna see more comparisons, there are a few more that I know that I'm gonna be doing relative to tuned, pro-tuned WRXs. But if you wanna see me go down the rabbit hole of WRX versus STI in pro-tuned fashion, and even look at some of the ones that have STI swapped transmissions of the VB to see how they compare. If you take one step further and really spend some money, I'm happy to do that. Let me know in the comment section below if you enjoyed this video. And if you stuck this far through, just leave me a comment because so few of you guys do. So if you stuck this far through, just let me know that you got to the end of the video because I not only will respond to you and look at those, but I do remember you guys. Like those are the ones that stand out to me and I see your names and respond to every other video. So let me know if you stuck this far through the video and I will see you guys in the next video.